Belida and trade unions are urging the government to intervene to save it if they can. But would nationalisation be the answer? Joining me now is Daniel Mahoney. He's Head of Economic Research at the Centre for Policy Studies and David Powell, a Associate Director at the New Economics Foundation. Welcome to you both. Um, Daniel, if I can ask you first of all, do you think uh, nationalisation is the answer? Um, uh, personally, no, I don't think that is the preferable answer. And there are two reasons for that. First, I don't think it would set a very good precedent for other industries that are in trouble. The instant reaction would be you know, to, to nationalise it. So I don't think it would be the preferable option. And also, I don't think it would solve the fundamental issues uh, that are sort of you know, being detrimental towards the steel industry. And that's um, the fact of very high energy costs and obviously the problem of dumping steel from China. David. Well, what we do need to do is buy this industry some time. That's definitely clear. And the government's got different ways that it can do that. We might be a way away from talking about nationalisation, and actually that can take a lot of different forms. But we know we need steel in this country. We know 5,500 people are uh, immediately dependent on it, with 40,000 more dependent than that. We need an industrial strategy that has a future for this industry, and the government needs to, at the very least, bail it out if it needs to be. I mean, that, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, there are two questions about this. Does Britain need a steel industry? Industry strategically for its future, in which case it's worth keeping going. And secondly, if it does go to the wall, there'll be massive social costs, won't there, in terms of trying to uh, repair the loss of jobs and the loss of way of life in a large part of Wales. Well, indeed, there will be for a lot of people who are employed in the industry. There's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I think the government have taken the right attitude here, which is try and buy time, try and in induce... I mean, you, you think we do need a steel industry? I, I, I think, I mean, I, th I think there's obviously a, a competitive is issue at the moment, but I think in the long run it will, it will be competitive because, you know, the price of steel is likely to increase. But I think what the government... But also in principle, I mean, you know, yeah. there is clearly an analogy with what happened to deep mine coal. We decided that we didn't, couldn't afford deep mine coal. We let that go. Could we let the steel industry go well, in the same way? I think, I think the, the, point here, the, the, the point here is, is that there are a lot of things that the government have done that have burdened the steel industry with costs, particularly on energy costs. So there are a lot of unilateral green measures that have been implemented that mean that you know, uh, British, steel pairs, British steel industry pays twice the level of, of the European Union average. Now that's you know, having a massive detrimental cost, and I think what the government needs to do is repeal those unilateral measures and try and make you know, the British steel industry competitive in the long run. It's repealed them. So that's that the government has done just about everything it can do. Well, it hasn't, it hasn't, cut, it hasn't cut the, uh, the green taxes on fuel, has not. it? No, it has. It's, it's, it's given a package of exemptions to the industry, some of which Once are backdated the at the start paid, of this year. Later, later, later let's, on. Let's I mean, be, but up. this is the, 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 the bigger issue is this, and Tata have been quite clear about what's going on here. The issue is Chinese steel is making it very uncompetitive in the UK at the moment. Now, what the solution to that appears to be is higher tariffs at the EU level. Tata have been quite clear also that the UK have been the voice in the EU that have been trying to stop those higher tariffs yeah. happening. And they're very disappointed with that. A lot of attention gets put onto the wrong things, but fundamentally this is what the government needs to do well, if it's serious. I mean, are higher tariffs the answer? I mean, uh, less than one in economics. They tell you tariffs are not a Can I first idea. go back to the point on mitigating the costs of energy? Now, that's actually not true. So the energy-intensive um, sort of package doesn't fully compensate uh, the, the energy costs, and that's because of EU state aid rules, so it doesn't allow a full compensation. But, I mean, as I understand it, we pay substantially more at British Steel Works for energy than they do in France and Germany. Absolutely. So you yeah. can't blame the EU for that. I'm not blaming the EU. This is unilateral measures. I no, do blame is. the European Union. Only a very this small, is, only a very the government small amount doing. of that. Only about 1% of the cost of the, the entire cost base of an energy intensive industry in this country was the bit of it that government controls through levies and the government is taking steps no. to repeal a lot of those and backdating I mean, and is trying to get it through Europe. The big, that is not the main economic driver. I do dispute that. So 20 to 40 percent of the cost to produce steel is made up of energy. Now if you've if you're lumping sort of carbon taxes, the carbon price floor is four times the level that EU industry pay. Now that's going to have a huge impact and, you know, I, I'm afraid I do dispute those figures. And, you know, if you look at the EEF and, and other industry players, they're really calling for lower energy okay. costs. Finally, you? quickly on that one. But the point is, it's only a very small amount of the energy right. cost. Is that bit that so you're So your solution about? would be tariffs. Uh, what well, do you say to that? I think... Um, you said the government hasn't been supporting tariffs. Actually, yeah. they did support low tariffs. So I think if the tariffs are aimed at sort of tackling that dumping of steel but, issue... But it is true, Tata said the British government had blocked them. They blocked higher tariffs. Uh, yeah. So there are, there are low tariffs in place at the moment. I think those are right yeah. because they're addressing that issue of, the, of China dumping steel. 
Um, so I, th I think if you go beyond that, then you're getting, entering into sort of protectionist region, and I don't think that's but there, desirable. I mean, there is a basic question here, and, and, and clearly you can want to keep the steel industry going for a number of reasons. But if a, a company like Tata, which has to be said is pretty admired and, and quite liked, I think, by its workers, and before that, Mittal, can't make this work, why, why should even with government investment, why should it be made to work? Well, the reason what we're having now, these discussions about bailouts and nationalisation and all of this stuff, is the result of not really having a plan for the steel industry I mean, for the last 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. So we've got to the point where, unlike with the finance industry, where the government has done all that it can to make the, the, the UK the place that the world does finance, we haven't had a guarantee. We haven't had the government doing what it can do to ensure that the steel that we need to build wind turbines, to build new railways, to build electric cars is British. We haven't had enough support from the government to make sure we have the world's most cutting edge, low carbon efficient, uh, energy efficient. Cheap so technology. too much free market and not well, enough planning. I mean, if, if you go down the option of more low carbon subsidies, that's going to increase energy bills even more. So I think that will you know, really be yeah. detrimental to the steel industry. But what about the suggestion if we're going to build all these infrastructure projects? Shouldn't, doesn't it just common sense to say, okay, we won't buy Chinese steel, we'll buy British steel? Well, as long as the British steel is competitive, and I've outlined ways which yeah. the government can make sure it's more competitive, but I don't think you should be intervening into the you know, market in that way and say, you know, we'll buy British steel at all yeah. costs. Let's try and make the, you know, industry competitive. Okay. Difficult question. Are these steel works around the country still going to be in operation in 20 years' time? I think they could be. So we know that we need steel. We know we're good at it. We know that for all sorts of reasons, not just pure cost-benefit analysis, but the fact this is so important to Wales, so important to yeah. people's way of life, the government could and should do a strategy. Do you think they'll still be there in 20 years' I time? I think there'll be some form of steel industry. It might be smaller than it is today, and that may be no bad thing. But, you know, we need to make sure that, you know, government sort of implements measures that can help the steel industry and I've explained how that can be brought about. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.